I generally have to dose much higher than my own body would typically produce. I might produce 70 milligrams per week of testosterone. This is where I see some providers get tripped up. It's practically like chemical castration. It is not a one-to-one -one replacement thing at all. Where I see most symptom resolution, literally like three times, four times the dose that they're giving. Exogenous hormone replacement therapy is not a one-to-one -one with endogenous hormone production and processing. I know, that's kind of a mouthful. And it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Let me let me try to break this down for you a little bit more now. So like in more like layman's terms, what, what am I saying here? So exogenous hormones, aka, you know, prescription hormone replacement therapy, hormones that come in tablets, pills, injections, creams, whatever. When we take those hormones and put them inside of us, whatever route we administer them, that is not the same. And, and this is obvious from like a 10,000 foot view, but we're going to dive a little deeper. That is not the same as when my own body produces those same hormones, right? It's not. When I say it's not a one-to-one, -one, it's, it's not the same type of thing. Now, you know, testosterone in and of itself, does testosterone, if I give myself testosterone, do the same things in many ways that my body's testosterone does for me also. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. It increases lean muscle mass. It decreases, you know, visceral adiposity. It helps improve my mood and mental clarity and blah, blah, blah. Of course. And those are very, very important principles to understand too. I mean, that's why in the course we like hit on every single one of those hormones and like, what's good about this hormone? What's, you know, sometimes problematic about this hormone? How do they all fit together? And, and what's the symphony back there? But but there is a difference when all of a sudden, again, we're taking the hormone from outside in rather than producing the hormone inside out. And of course, it would be almost impossible to like truly understand that without somehow being able to see this at the you know molecular level. But you know, one you know obvious example would be, well, number one, if I give myself testosterone replacement therapy at a dose that, reasonably is going to resolve symptoms, well, usually we're going to have a shutdown effect, right? We're going to have a, our, our feedback loop from our brain to our, my, you know, my testicles, not your testicles, but, uh, you know, that feedback loop is going to get messed up and it's going to shut down my LH and FSH. It's going to suppress those hormones, those gonadotropins from my pituitary gland, which is then going to decrease my own intratesticular testosterone production and not just testosterone, progesterone, pregnenolone, DHEA, blah, blah, blah. Now, what I can tell you is that in the randomized control trials and large observational studies, we've not seen a, a net negative in that sense at all. In fact, what we see is when people are given testosterone replacement therapy, we see a decrease in all-cause mortality and an improvement in quality of life and all the good stuff we know. Yet, yet we have to now consider that it's different. Here's a really, really good example of that. So if I give myself testosterone replacement therapy, I generally have to dose much higher than my own body would typically produce week in and week out. Okay, let me clarify that a little bit more. On average, uh, uh, a male, let's just say a male in his prime especially, and let's say really healthy, you know, male, you know, we've seen that the testicles produce, you know, somewhere between maybe seven and 10 milligrams of testosterone per day, intratesticularly, that's what we see. So, okay, over the span of a week, my own body at the healthiest point it could ever be, which again, who knows what that is these days with all the crap we have going on, but I, I might produce 70 milligrams per week of testosterone. Now, this is where I see some providers get tripped up. And by the way, I see this a lot coming from like endocrinologists and neurologists. Um, and I think it ironically makes sense because these guys probably know that fact, right? Like how much testosterone is produced from a testicle? Oh, this much. Only an endocrinologist or urologist would probably know that and get off on that. So they make these assumptions and say, hmm, well, if that's true, 
I don't want to, you know, and, and there's some logic here. I don't want to stray from what the body naturally does. I should prescribe my male patients 70 or 80 milligrams of testosterone cypionate injected, you know, once weekly. And how do those men feel? <laughs> well, generally they feel awful. It's practically like what we would consider a chemical castration. It's not going to be enough testosterone to do just about anything. It's going to have a net negative effect and probably shut down their own production of testosterone to some degree, intratesticularly, but it's not enough exogenous testosterone to get rid of the symptoms. So now they're really screwed. And I've seen guys, you know, their levels were in the 300s and then they do that regimen, let's just say 80 milligrams a week. And they come back and their levels are like in the 100s and they feel terrible. Now, it's hard to fault. It, it, seriously, I think it's very hard to fault a urologist and endocrinologist because I actually, I see the logic and, and I also see the importance of how they're understanding, hey, we, we don't want to disrupt the biological system at play here. We want to actually try to, you know, meet it halfway and, and try to keep up with it. But unfortunately, that's not how hormone replacement therapy works. It is not a one-to-one -one replacement thing at all. If it was, then we would see that 70 or 80 milligrams once weekly of testosterone cypionate would probably crush it. It'd probably be great. And it would work for most guys, but it doesn't. And I mean, most of my guys need to be 150 to 200 milligrams a week total. I split the doses, of course, and we talk about that in the course, but um, like that's where I see most symptom resolution at literally like three times, four times the dose that they're giving. What does that mean? Well, what it should tell you, number one, is that we don't really have a good understanding of endocrinology as it applies to hormone replacement therapy. We are taking an internal process, throwing it out the window, and adding something in that messes with that system. How does exogenous testosterone, again, affect all the other hormones that we're typically being produced in the testicles, progesterone and DHEA and pregnenolone. And okay, yeah, maybe they're really small amounts, but hey, a little goes a long way in the human body. Maybe those hormones were doing something really important. And maybe that's why we see some guys feel a lot better when we add something like HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin in, because it restores some of that hormone production and processing. Maybe it's the LH, the luteinizing hormone. We, we know that in the literature, luteinizing hormone has really interesting cognitive effects. And in fact, it appears that men with low LH levels have some issues with cognitive function. We even see LH seems to be a positive thing on uh, the brain in terms of like things like Parkinson's disease and tremors. So there's, there's, again, there's all kinds of really interesting things here. And by the way, I'm not asking you to get caught up in that stuff. Okay. I, I find it interesting and I want you to know that. I just want you to know it, or at least have come across that so that as you're providing hormone replacement therapy and testosterone replacement therapy to your men and women, you, you're operating from this more humble place of, Hey, the body does very different things when we give hormones from the outside in rather than what's produced inside out. Thank you so much for checking out this clip and tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. If you really liked it, I definitely recommend that you click here to watch the whole entire video where I go into much more detail. Thank you again for joining and I'll see you there.